Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Josh here, and I am playing Minecraft, and I don't, it doesn't look like it's showing, but this is official release 1.0.0. Finally came out not that long ago, and so what I want, so I'm going to be playing some Minecraft here for you guys, and while I do that, I wanted to talk about something that has come up a bunch uh, lately. Mostly, I guess by lately I mean this summer. And what I want to do with this with this series is answer questions that maybe you guys have or that we come across, just common questions, about God, about Christianity, and uh, understanding maybe what the Bible's talking about more. And so what this one, what this... Uh, pilot episode, if it were, I'm going to talk about. A uh, question came to me from a couple different people. They talking about how does it relate to God when bad things happen? Um, loss of loved ones or just terrible disasters or just mistakes that we made and we wish that we could take them back. And particularly they said they always get this, you know, the cliche saying, Hey, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, and that's supposed to make us feel better. And they're, they're what they said to me, they're like, that doesn't really, what does that mean? Does that mean that God had these things happen? God made these things happen for us? Since they happened, and they happened for some reason that we don't understand or whatever. And they weren't really very comforted by it, and I can't say I blame them. I'm really not... A fan of using I try to not use the phrase myself because just because of that it's so easily misunderstood or mistaken because it does sound it sounds like that sounds like well you don't have any control and these things happen and and you know it's supposed to happen to you these terrible things they're supposed to happen that's what it sounds like which I don't I don't believe that they're supposed to happen. It's not the way we were designed where God intended us. But talking about everything happens for a reason. It does happen for a reason. It's causality. Things happen because of something caused them to. You stub your toe and that's why you uh, have a hurt toe. But they, they asked me, like, what is this man? I'm like, well, he, and so I told them uh, this. I told them what everything happens for a reason, what it means to me. Because I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but I think it's misleading. And so I told them what I'm going to tell you now. I told them the story of a man named Joseph who lived psh, forever ago, like 4,000 years ago. And this story, uh, his, his story, the overview of his life is found in Genesis, it's recorded. So what Joseph is one of the 12 sons that Jacob has from his three wives, I want to say. I think it's three. And J Jacob, who also known as Israel, who is the patriarch, the, the founding father, if you were, of um, the whole Jewish nation of Israelites, the Hebrews. Um, anyone that we know today who is... Jewish heritage uh, has their lineage back to Jacob. So one of his 12 sons is Joseph. It's his second youngest. Um, his youngest is Benjamin. Joseph was the firstborn of Jacob's wife whom he loved the most. And because of that, uh, Joseph kind of is like the favorite son and everyone knows it. Kind of. And Jacob doesn't make a real big secret of it. He's not very good at hiding his favoritism. And so his other brothers don't like Joseph that much. They, they see him kind of like as this spoiled spoiled brat. and Which, as far as we can tell, Joseph really wasn't that. Like, he was, he was spoiled, but they, he was doing the best he knew how. He wasn't necessarily trying to rub it in the other's faces or anything. But... Uh, they didn't like him very much, and so uh, one day um, Joseph had this coat that was a gift from his dad. It was a very recognizable coat, uh, and Joseph, Jacob sends Joseph out 
because apparently Joseph wasn't actually having to work already. Another reason why the brothers probably didn't like him. Uh, the other brothers were out in the field working with the sheep, and so Jacob sends his brother sends Joseph to check up on them because they're out quite a ways. And so Jacob, I keep saying Jacob, Joseph, Joseph goes out obediently like his dad asks to check up on his brothers. And while he's out there, the brothers see him coming and their anger continues. Man, I'm having a hard time jumping up here, aren't I? And they get the idea that, that since they're out in the middle of nowhere, no one will know, they're going to kill Joseph and make it look like a wild animal did it and just get rid of him forever, get him out of the way so they don't have to deal with him anymore. And so they're getting ready, there's this old cistern, they're getting ready to dump him in the cistern and just do him in. And uh, Reuben, one of the brothers, he's like, you know what guys, he's our own brother, we can't kill him. So instead, let's just, let's just leave him. And he, and Although he, it does say that he planned on trying to save his brother later. But he's like, well, let's leave him. And so they leave him and they go a little ways away and they have a little lunch while their brother Joseph is in this well, just probably screaming, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get his brothers to let him out. And they're just completely ignoring him. And while they're eating their lunch, some... Ishmaelites come by, and Judah, one of the, one of the brothers, gets the idea. He says, "Why should we just get nothing out of this? If we're gonna get rid of our brother, we might as well get something out of it. If we kill him, we don't get anything. If we leave him, we don't get anything. Let's sell him to these Ishmaelites, so at least we get some money out of it." That was his brilliant idea. So that's what they do. They sell Joseph to these Ishmaelites, sell him into slavery. And they take Joseph and sell him to an Egyptian named Potiphar. So here's Joseph in slavery to Potiphar. But it says that God blessed him in what he did and he prospered. So he ended up, while he was in slavery, uh, Potiphar put him in charge of all of his household and didn't even worry about it because he knew that whatever Joseph was doing was going to work out. So that's pretty pretty high praise. God's taking care of him. So it's like, okay, God's God's taking care of Joseph. I can see that. That's a good deal. What? So then Joseph's going about his business as a slave doing the stuff, and Potiphar's wife gets an eye for Joseph. She thinks he's a pretty good-looking dude. And so she decides she is going to bed Joseph. So she keeps coming to Joseph and and pretty much demanding that he take her. And he said he says to her, he says, Your your husband, my master, has given me everything already. Everything but you who are his wife. Why would I dishonor him by doing that? With this thing which isn't right. And she doesn't like that. So she keeps coming back to him over and over again, trying to convince him to sleep with her and he won't do it. And it's day after day after day, this just keeps happening. And so, until one day, um, he's going to about his business, and there's this built this uh, place where he ends up where he's by himself. And she comes in and waits for him, knowing that he's going to have to come there. And when she when he comes in, she grabs him by the cloak, and she's pretty much going to like hang on to him until he. It is willing, I guess. The best way to put it. And he and he, she has him by the cloak, so he just leaves his cloak and runs out, cloakless. And at this point, the white uh, Potiphar's wife is super mad that he won't sleep with her. So she's like, "Fine, if that's how it's going to be." And so she waits for her husband to get home, and still holding uh, Joseph's cloak. She tells the husband, tells all the other people, she says that, she says, while you were out, Joseph 
he tried to uh, push himself upon me. He tried to ha he tried to get me to have sex with him, and I screamed out. And when I screamed, he left his cloak and ran away. So pretty much he lies, and it says that Potiphar burned with anger, and so he had Joseph thrown in prison for this thing that um, that obviously we know he didn't do because we uh, we read the story from the other person. So he's thrown in jail for this thing he for something he supposedly do did, which wasn't even true. And that uh, he ends up there in jail in this Egyptian prison. So so far Joseph's life's going pretty well, I'd say. You know, started out with eleven brothers who tried to kill him, threw him in a well, and then sold him to slavery. Then things started to look up. He's in charge of everything at the household and gets thrown in jail for something he didn't do. Okay. So he's in jail here and he again prospers. It says that God blessed him in everything that he did. And so the jailkeeper started putting him in charge of different things around the jail. Even in charge of other prisoners. Even though he himself was still a prisoner. Uh, he was in charge of looking out for other prisoners as well. And so along comes these two prisoners uh, who worked in Pharaoh's court. One was the cupbearer and one was the baker. And Joseph is in charge of them. He's kind of their, their watch over, their go-to guy for things they need, whatever's going on. And they're in there for a while. And then one night, they both have a dream, both of them. Uh, similar dreams, but not identical. And they're really freaked out because they both had this dream and they don't understand. And so Joseph comes in doing his normal thing and he sees them and he's like, what's up guys, why are you so bummed? And they like, and they say, well we both had this dream and we don't know what it means and it's freaking us out. And he says, well tell me your dream because God can interpret it for you. God can tell you what it is. And he, they tell him their dreams and he says to them, he's like, okay, well there's good news and there's bad news. Good news, cupbearer. This dream that means that in three days you're gonna get your position back. Bad news, baker. Three days you are going to be hung. And so, and then Joseph says to the cupbearer, he says, when this happens, when you get your position back, remember me, and tell because I have been wrongly imprisoned. I didn't do it. So remember me and tell somebody and get me out of here because I don't need. I don't deserve to be here. And so. It happens just like Joseph said it would. In three days, uh, it the Pharaoh has a party. I think it's Pharaoh's birthday. And he goes and he decides that he's going to pardon the cupbearer. But the baker, he is going to have hanged. Just like Joseph said it would. And so the cup says the cupbearer went back into his job, but he forgot about Joseph. Which is incredible to me. I don't know how he could forget something like that, but it's what, it's what happened. So now Joseph is still in prison. It says for another two years he stayed in prison. And then Pharaoh had a dream that kept recurring. He actually had two dreams, one after the other, that really freaked him out. And he calls all the wise men of the land all the magicians and enchanters and people that are supposed to be able to do these kinds of things, diviners, fortune tellers, and none of them are able to tell him what his dream means. And then finally the cupbearer says to the fairy, he's like, oh my goodness, I'm such a, I'm terrible, I completely forgot I was supposed to tell you. He says, there's a person in jail, in prison, who is able to interpret dreams. He interpreted mine and the baker's dream and it happened just like he said it would. I was returned to my position and the baker was hanged. Both just like the dream was interpreted. If you call him, perhaps he can interpret your dream. So Pharaoh does. He calls on Joseph and says, I hear that you can interpret dreams. And Joseph, I love this, Joseph says, no, I can't do that. I'm not able to interpret dreams. He says, only God can do that. And through me, he will tell you what your dream means. 
And then he tells, the Pharaoh tells him his dream, and Joseph listens to him, and, and uh, God speaks to him, and, sa and Joseph tells Pharaoh, he says, this dream means that for the next seven years, there's going to be a plentiful harvest like you've never seen before, and everything is just going to prosper. There's going to be tons and tons of grains, and everything is just, it's going to be bountiful. He says, but all, but after that seven years, there's going to be seven years of famine. Famine so bad that you won't even remember the plentiful times. It'll be like they never even happened. It'll be distant memory. And so what you need to do, Pharaoh, is you need, during those seven years of plenty, you need to find someone wise and discerning and capable and have them s collect from the people... Uh, 20% of all that they get of all their harvest and store it up for the years of famine that way your people won't starve and that you won't be ruined and Pharaoh says to him well you're the one that was able to interpret this dream so I don't know anybody wise, wiser than you or more capable so since this was since this was your interpretation I want you to be in charge of that so he takes Joseph out of prison puts him in charge of this and in fact eventually he puts him in charge of everything in the kingdom he says to Joseph that you'll be second in you'll be second to me only in that I have the throne and so it happens just as Joseph predicted it would and just as the Pharaoh says Joseph becomes second in command of all of Egypt uh, and he collects the taxes from the people as far as I know, it was the first time they were taxed in that land. Um, and stored up the grain during the seven years of plenty. And then the famine strikes. And it doesn't strike just Egypt. It strikes the whole region, everything in the area. So the, the surrounding countries are all in famine as well. And dying. But Egypt is fine because they have food. They're not dying. And so comes along about two years in uh, Jacob you remember Jacob Joseph's father he doesn't know anything as far his um, oh I missed this his brothers took Joseph's coat covered it in goat's blood when they after they sold him to the slavers and took it back to Jacob so that he thought that Joseph had been slain by a wild animal basically so Joseph, Jacob thinks that Joseph is dead and he's pretty distraught from that and he probably still hasn't recovered after these few years but Jacob says to his remaining sons he says he says I hear that there's food in Egypt so you guys need to go down to Egypt and get that food and so they they do they go to, they travel to Egypt and end up they start talking to Joseph but they don't know it's Joseph yet because they don't know what's happened to him they certainly aren't expecting him to be dressed as an Egyptian and in charge of all of the food so they go and there's a very long and intricate inter uh, exchange between them that isn't really relevant right now so I'm not going to go into it if you want to if you want to see it it's in Genesis around 40 ish chapter 40 ish I think I I'm not don't quote me on that I didn't make a cheat sheet for this like I probably should have but uh, eventually, uh, Joseph is able to get all of his brothers, because originally only ten of them came. His youngest brother, his younger brother Benjamin, didn't come, and he's able to get his father to come. And the brother, and eventually he reveals who he is, and his brothers are like, "Okay, so Joseph, here's Joseph. Guys, it's me. It's Joseph. And here's the brothers. Oh crap! This is not good." Because here is the, basically the, one, the most powerful person in Egypt, apart from the Pharaoh. Turns out it's their brother, whom they sold into slavery after discussing whether or not to kill. So they're thinking they're in deep trouble. And but this this is the the pinnacle of the story, which I don't think this is the best I've told this story. But the pinnacle of this story right here, they're terrified, absolutely terrified of what's going to happen to them and Joseph says don't worry guys don't be upset that you sold me in a prison and don't be afraid of what's going to happen he says 
what you intended for evil, God used for good. And to me, that is what everything happens for a reason means. Because without them selling Joseph, Joseph into prison, he probably would not have ended up in Egypt. And while he was in Egypt, he predicted the famine that was going to come through God's power. God used him to predict this famine. And because of that, there was food in all of Egypt. And there was food to sustain the brothers as well as everything. And eventually the uh, Joseph's brothers and his father all moved to Egypt and multiply there and all of the Hebrew nation uh, originally develops there they become many to begin with and so I just love that, that he has that kind of faith and understanding because I don't know if I would have been that forgiving but he says he says what you intended for evil God was able to use for good and that's that's what everything happens for a reason means it's not that we're supposed to go through bad things it's that no matter what bad things we go through God is bigger than those things God can take terrible terrible situations and use them to be good things they don't have to stay bad uh, creeper I think what 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 I usually prefer I don't like to think everything happens for a reason when I'm in trouble, when I go through bad situations, and I don't necessarily give it as advice. I prefer to think about, in Romans, Paul's talking Romans 8, 8, 28, says that we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, love God, who have been called according to his purpose. And that's saying that no matter what happens, it'll work, it'll turn out all right when you're on God's side. No matter what Satan intends, what the world intends for evil, what looks like a terrible thing, wh whether your parents get divorced or whatever, it doesn't matter that it looks bad now. God can use it and make it something beautiful. No matter what your past is, it doesn't matter. God loves you and God is bigger than your troubles. So that's what I want to talk about today is just... Joseph's story and this question about does everything happen for a reason and so that's all I got uh, took me all night to get through that story it was such a long story and so I'll, t I'll see you guys next time uh, this was the first of this series I want, I'm hoping to start um, I just want to know if you, you whoever views this just uh, send me any questions you have, things you would like to hear me answer, and hopefully as I do this, I'll get I'll get better at how to do it. It won't be as rambly as this one. I'll get better at multitasking, and also I'm hoping to bring on some other people, because I know I've watched lots of uh, Let's Plays and videos, and this is kind of my, part of my inspiration, and I know that it's always, I've always been a lot more interested in watching when there's more than one person, because that dialogue makes things so much more interesting. And I'll try to we'll try to put in silly videos and fun stuff too, cause I I don't I don't think that uh, just cause I'm talking about God it has to be boring. I mean, life's life can can be fun. You can have joy, and that's what it's all about. So I've got a, I've got one friend who's hilarious and does all kinds of weird noises and sound effects, and I'm hoping to get him involved. He hasn't played my Maybe we'll fix that eventually. Just Skype him in initially. And we'll, and he's one of the most solid people I know. And so we'll just try to answer questions. And it doesn't matter if you got difficult questions, easy questions, whatever. We'll, we'll try to get through them all. We'll pick the ones that we feel God leads us to answer each week. And I say each week. That's, that's ambitious. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I've never done something like this before. So I just want to give it a try and go from there but it won't work if I don't get any questions I can't make stuff up all the time I can I guess I could I could just try to preach at you guys but that's no fun I want to answer questions oh that was a new sound I don't want I want to answer questions that you actually have not questions I think you have so apparently 1.0.0 has a new sound effect for 
getting experience. Did not know that. Alright, so I'm really going this time. I'll see you guys later.